Today I want us to just share together uh, about hearing the voice of the Lord because it's so important for God's children to hear His voice. You know, they were walked in the garden. Adam and Eve walked in the garden in the cool of the evening. And God came down, the Father came down, and visited with them and communicated with them, spoke to them. And, you know, His voice brings peace and His voice brings comfort. And what does the world need but someone who is hearing the voice of the Lord that can speak to them comfort and joy and peace? Uh, during these trying times. And you know, in Mark chapter 12, verse uh, 28, it says here, One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked Jesus, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? And in verse 29, Jesus gives the answer, which of all of these commandments is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. But first of all, hear His voice. Jesus, these are Jesus' words. This is the, the Savior Himself, the Messiah Himself, saying, Hear the voice of the Lord, O Israel. And we know that the children of God, the body of Christ, is spiritual Israel. And so we must hear His voice and obey His voice. And how do we do that? You know, He comes to us in different ways. We can hear through the Word of God, through the Scriptures. He will um, speak to us and speak to our heart uh, about a certain issue or situation. We know that He speaks through dreams and visions uh, in, the, in the night when He... Um, gives those to us and and he sometimes it's a warning and sometimes it's a uh, a direction that he wants us to go uh, but he does speak today i want you to know that god speaks today there was a time when i was told uh, as an early christian that god didn't speak any longer he was not speaking uh and you could not hear his voice. And that was a lie from the pit of hell. And when I found out that I could hear from my father, from my daddy, it gives me comfort and it always brings me peace. It always brings me joy. Hallelujah. You know, you see this tree behind me. And every time I see these bright, brilliant red colors, I think about the burning bush. And in, in um, Exodus chapter 3, it says that, you know, we know the story of Moses. We know that he was um, raised up in Pharaoh's house. But then in chapter 2, he finds out who he really is. That he is a, he, he's a, one of the Israelites. He is a, a Hebrew child. And, and he decides that he's going to do away from from Pharaoh and the, the pleasures and the riches, and, and that stands for the world. And when we come out of the world, and then we can be used of the Lord uh, and hear His voice. And in chapter 2, it says that He flees uh, because He... Um, he murders uh, one of the uh, Egyptians because they are mistreating the Israelites. And he flees uh, and he's out in the backside of the desert. And in chapter 3, we find him tending the flocks of, of his father-in-law Jethro. And it says uh, in uh, verse 2, There the, the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire, from when, from within a bush. And like I said, every time that I see a tree like the one that is, is behind me, I think about the burning bush that God came and he spoke to Moses out of that burning bush. You know, he, he got Moses' attention, didn't he? When you see a, a bush that is not consumed, 
and it's on fire, then you stop and you take notice. And Moses saw that through the bush was on, though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here am I. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for this place you're standing is on holy ground. You know, when we come together and communicate with God, we are on holy ground. And even though he was in that burning bush, but his presence is so strong and so mighty, and he is holy. He is a holy God. And he says, take off your sandals because this is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. You know, we don't have to be afraid to look upon the face of our Father because our Father is merciful and our Father is loving and our Father is good and He loves us and He wants to speak to us. And I want you to be encouraged this day that he may not come to you in a burning bush, but he, he will come to you and he will speak good tidings unto you. And you will know what he wants you to do. And you will know your purpose and your destiny just like Moses did. God revealed to him that he was to go and he was to get the people of Israel out of Egypt, which stands for the world. Moses' name means drawn out. Praise the name of Jesus. We have been drawn out from among the heathen. We have been drawn out from the world. And now we have a purpose and a destiny just like Moses did. And even though the burning bush was just to get the attention of Moses, God spoke to him, and Moses obeyed. I speak to you today. When you hear the voice of the Lord, be quick to obey. Thank you for viewing, and God bless you. She